Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video. This is number 19 in an ongoing series of videos about how to create comic books. Uh, whether it be in a manga style or an American style, it's really not important. The style, all of this advice can be applied to any type of comic book storytelling. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is focus on action sequences, uh, giving you my best advice uh, on how to create them, the different things that you should think about uh, as you create a, an action scene for your story. So I'm going to start off here with number one. Uh, clarity is more important than anything else. Now what I mean by that is that when you're doing action scenes, it's, it's especially important for the reader to not get lost, for them to know where the characters are and uh, what's going on from one panel to the next. So this is a scene from Brody's ghost. Brody has been shot. He looks up. We see the guy with the gun. He's aiming. You know, it's all very clear what's happening in each panel. You know, here we see that the guy missed. And the, down here uh, is a particularly, a particularly important panel. Gives us the location of Brody uh, hiding behind this area of the patio and this guy and we see the distance between them. Now when we go to the next page, again I come back, I do an aerial shot showing the guy coming closer. Very important uh, for the reader to understand the relationship uh, between these two characters in this scene. So I'd say any time that you are creating a um, comic book uh, action sequence, pay special attention. Uh, no matter what kind of cool ideas you come up with, make sure that the clarity uh, is there from one panel to the next so that the reader always understands what's going on. Number two, plan out the whole scene in rough form rather than making it up one page at a time. Now, I'm all for spontaneity, but um, I believe uh, in terms of action sequences, you're getting into very uh, complex storytelling. And uh, so rather than just sort of uh, do one complete page and then move on to the next, I really think it's helpful to, uh, at least in rough form, figure out what's going to be on each page, um, uh, sort of wrangling with the complexities of what it is that you're putting forth. Um, if you don't do that, I think you can unfortunately fall into the trap of feeling, well, boy, I put so much work into this sequence, uh, you know, inking it and going all the way to completion. Um, I don't want to, you know, have wasted all that time. So even though it's hard to understand what's going on, I'm going to uh, uh, just go ahead and stick with this. Like here's a sequence here, and you'll see that eventually I changed it because later on I'm going to use this same scene. Uh, as, a, uh, as a similar example for a different point. But um, uh, this uh, area here shows the basic beats of uh, what needs to be presented, but I've still allowed myself to change things a little when I came down to the final page. Uh, but at least I understood what I was going to be doing uh, because I did this rough version uh, to get started. Number three, an action scene should build, often heading toward a climactic moment. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So this is from Mickey Falls, book four. I'm just going to go ahead and show you this whole sequence. Don't worry too much about uh, spoilers, because it's not like there are any shocking revelations. But uh, uh, the main characters, Miki and Hiro, from uh, the story, they uh, find this guy blocking their path, and the guy jumps up. Uh, uh, Hiro and this guy get into a fight. Uh, the guy gets the upper hand. He's slamming Hiro's head against the wall of this cliff face, and then uh, Miki, uh, becoming angry, grabs this rock, runs over, and crack, slams it on the guy's head. So you can see that it's not just like a messy fight sequence. It, it has a structure to it. Uh, we have the beginning, we have the middle, and there's sort of a escalation of action, you know, of, of crisis here, where, you know, we feel if this guy keeps slamming Hiro's head against the wall, he could, you know, cause him brain damage or something, and so uh, we know it's at stake, and we're like, what's going to happen next? And it builds towards this moment of climactic action where um, Miki slams the guy's uh, head with this rock, and I've given this its whole page, you know, uh, because this is the peak of the action, the thing that sort of resolves everything. So I think it's helpful to think of uh, an action sequence in this way, as having a beginning, a middle, and end, and generally speaking, building towards a climactic moment um, yeah, in which, you know, your uh, protagonists either defeat the person they're up against or uh, are in fact defeated by them. Number four, combine close-ups, wide shots, and everything in between. 
So this is from Brody's Ghost Book 1. A lot of these examples will be from the Brody's Ghost series. It has more action sequences than uh, any story I've ever done. Uh, and here we see a fight between Brody and this 12-year-old boy uh, and, uh, you know, jumping up and kicking him in the head and so forth. The whole point of the scene really is to show that Brody is not a good fighter. Uh, at this stage uh, in the story. But notice how there are different points of view. There are, um, you know, as I said in the piece of advice, wide shots. We get way up here and uh, see the distance between them. There are close-ups, you know, as the guy's foot uh, hits the ground. Uh, and uh, here, like a, a super intense close-up of just zooming in on the eye. Um, just uh, for variety's sake, it's good to to uh, not restrict yourself uh, or have too many of the same type of uh, shot uh, one after the other. So you know, if I, here you can see there's quite a lot of sort of shots in which uh, we're a little bit at a distance, and uh, that's basically um, hitting a bunch of beats where all the bodies are of similar size. So it was pretty crucial at this stage to move a little closer in. Uh, or pull a little further away here, get a little more variety. So there's just something to be, um, you know, aware of as you plan out your action sequence. Get some variety in there in terms of uh, how close you are uh, to the characters. Number five, consider the benefits of showing the action primarily from one character's point of view. This one is uh, from Brody's Ghost Book 5, and it actually is the uh, finished pages that I showed you earlier in Rough Sketch form, um, but uh, clearly we're seeing most everything from Brody's point of view. Um, you know, if we suddenly switched to the, you know, police car's point of view, that might be uh, disorienting. And, um, yeah, really, it, I'm not saying you should always tell every action sequence from one character's point of view, but it certainly uh, can be helpful in terms of not losing the reader, uh, helping them identify with the protagonist if, indeed, you stick um, with one character's experience uh, of this action scene as it transpires. Number six, I prefer to strictly limit the amount of dialogue and narration, often eliminating it altogether. Now, really, uh, to be more accurate, I should say these days I prefer to limit the amount of uh, narration and dialogue. That was not always the case. Uh, back in my Akiko comic book uh, days, I had a story about the Akiko replacement robot who was on the run from this guy uh, named Jimmy Hampton chasing after her. And uh, in those days, I would use uh, copious amounts of narration. You know, uh, check out this one right here. Fortunately, I'd been programmed with a highly detailed three-dimensional map of Middleton, part of a comprehensive data bank including side streets, alleyways, and most importantly, office buildings. Uh, and she cuts into this office building. Well, uh, it was sort of fun for the comedic aspect of this story, but it certainly does slow things down. When the reader has to stop and, and read the narration, uh, it slows down uh, the speed with which they move through this scene that is supposed to be flying by pretty quickly, and it also, I think, pulls you out of the story a little bit. It, it, it doesn't allow you to be in the moment as a reader. Uh, you're being pulled uh, uh, into this alternate world of narration. Uh, it's sort of like voiceover in a movie, and um, it can kind of uh, kill the excitement of a scene, I find. So these days, I actually hardly ever use narration, and um, uh, similarly don't have very much dialogue in my action scenes. Number seven, beware of having your action sequence go on for too long, uninterrupted. Now, I'm pretty sure I showed this before in, an, in another video, but uh, I thought it was pretty important as an example of a, uh, an action sequence that, uh, as originally planned, went on a little bit too long. The fight scene uh, in this Brody's Ghost story uh, had three extra pages originally, but my editor uh, came to me and said, you know, this is just, uh, <laughs> it starts to become boring when you have that many uh, pages of action. The reader needs uh, a break. And um, it's it's kind of a shame because in movies, I think you can get away with very long action sequences like, uh, you know, uh, Mad Max Fury Road. You've got uh, very long action sequences and they're uh, you can do that in film. You keep cutting every few seconds to a different scene. There's no problem doing that. It's not exactly the same in comics. To you know, to present faithfully even a couple of minutes of uh, Mad Max in comic book form, you might end up with 10, 15, 20 pages um, just to convey that amount of action. So you're in a different world when you're working in comics, and you may find that you just have to curtail 
um, the length of an action scene. You put a little bit of a break in there so that the reader has a breather before you uh, get back into the action. Number eight, be aware of the page turn, using it to hide surprising moments in the action. So yes, the page turn, it's something I've become more and more aware of uh, over the years. And here's an example during this fight scene uh, with Brody. We see him sort of having defeated this one guy uh, and uh, he drops his baseball bat, comes over and then whoa, you know, <laughs> the big turn. Well, it's no coincidence that I put this at the bottom right hand corner because that hides and creates a moment of drama uh, or mystery, I guess I should say, as the reader doesn't know what is he looking at, what does he see, what's going to happen next, and boom, we see this guy coming with the chair, it slams into Brody and, you know, basically traps him down on the ground. So, uh, yeah, uh, it was planned out in advance uh, by some of those uh, rough pencil sketches uh, with me thinking about uh, the importance of that page turn. So something to keep in mind, not just for action sequences, for any uh, moment that you're trying to hide and keep a little bit of a secret uh, from the reader. Um, if you're doing left to right, uh, have that moment of surprise in the upper left-hand corner uh, of a uh, left-hand page so that it's hidden uh, from the reader. Number nine, consider using non-square panels to accentuate the action. All right, so I've arranged this list basically from number one uh, being most important down towards uh, eight, nine, ten being not necessarily least important, but more personal, more things that I like doing that I'm not sure everyone is going to want to do. But uh, this is from Brody's Ghost, book two. Uh, the action has not yet started, and as you can see, all of the panels are uh, rectangular, square, um, composed of uh, horizontal, vertical lines. Everything's very stable looking. And then uh, once the action begins, and suddenly we get away from those square panels. We start getting these unusually shaped panels. That's my technique for um, showing that we've gotten away from the uh, the calmness of the previous stuff, and we've everything's gotten knocked out of balance. We've gotten into intense drama. Here you can see I even have started making uh, jagged edges to the panels. Um, again, sort of a personal thing. Some people may feel that it's uh, gimmicky, uh, but um, you know I'm basically pulling out the stops to uh, make this moment in the story as action-packed as possible. Oh, you know, before we leave uh, this scene, I wanted to just point out, some of you may be looking at all these sound effects and saying, well, hey, how come you're not talking about the use of sound effects uh, in action scenes? Well, uh, I have a whole separate video devoted to the use of sound effects, not just in action scenes, but uh, in you know comic book storytelling in general. So I'll put a link to that uh, in the info box if indeed you are uh, curious to find out more about that. Number 10. Sometimes it is more effective to suggest the action rather than actually illustrate it. So in the Mickey Falls series, I had this scene where uh, Hiro gets slapped across the face, and as I tried to come up with a way of drawing the hand moving across the face, I eventually came to the uh, conclusion that it was best not to actually show it. Uh, we see the hand moving through the air. We see just uh, speed lines here and the sort of impact, but there's no drawing of the hand touching his face. That's really left uh, to your imagination, and I found that uh, that was actually the best way of doing it. I have uh, one more example of this. So uh, I had a scene in Brody's Ghost where uh, Brody was surrounded by these guys pointing guns at him, and I was sort of struggling with coming up with a dramatic way of presenting, uh, you know, Brody's method of using his telekinetic powers to to send blasts of energy at them and knock them down. This aerial view didn't seem to be working, and over here you see that I landed on this uh, solution of pulling outside of the railroad car that they were in and sort of showing it all from a distance. Uh, and in this sense, uh, I felt that I solved the problem really by kind of suggesting what happens um, uh, hinting at it a little more than showing explicitly the guys getting hit by the, those you know individual blasts of energy. All right, well, there's my video offering advice on uh, creating action scenes for comic books. Just thought I'd also throw in here that uh, Mastering Manga 2 uh, has a very extensive section uh, about comic book storytelling. Uh, those of you who want to take things further, that would be the book to get. But let's go ahead and wind this uh, video down. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.